everybody. We're coming to you from the North American International Auto Show in Detroit. I'm Mike Wolfolk along with our Sinclair Broadcast Group Automotive Editor Jill Simonello. And Jill, it's always great to see you at Auto Show time. Oh, I, thank you for having me. I love to be here. <laughs> Listen, uh, we've got a great show coming everyone's way. What do we expect this year? You know, the Detroit Three are back in a big way. So we have the 2019 Chevrolet Silverado. We've got the 2019 Ram 1500. And, and, this is a big and, we had a surprise from Mustang this year. Uh, they showed us the new version of the Mustang Bullet. Yes, they did. And they also brought back the old classic version. Uh, they're not going to sell it, of course, but we all got to take a look at it. We all remember it from the Steve McQueen movie. Well, it's here. Yep. right now for everyone to see and enjoy. In addition to all of that, we are going to talk about the future. We've got some cool concept cars to show you. We're also going to talk to some students from Flint's own Kettering University. They are right now working on a great project that deals with autonomy. So we're going to find out more about that and uh, who knows, maybe we even have a few surprises in store for everybody. Always love the surprises. Absolutely. So stay with us from the North American International Auto Show in Detroit. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. I've taken 25 selfies in the last 10 minutes. 26. Yep, yeah, I'm definitely gonna call a ride home. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. My text to emoji ratio has gotten a little out of hand. A little? Yep, I'm definitely gonna call a ride home. It's a big responsibility. Oh, it's huge, I know, it's huge. You know, and it's... the salary. Oh my good, yes. Right? I mean, like, I was literally, I was about to move in with my parents and <laughs> right before, the, yeah, so this saved me. I, I really believe in you, you know? Thank you, it's nice to hear that. Um, <laughs> These are cool. Uh, did you, um, what did fouls are pretty dumb but if you decide to drink and drive underage you could lose your license and your freedom underage drinking and driving the ultimate party foul welcome back we'll begin our tour here in the Chevrolet display area and of course all the talk is about the Silverado pickup truck. Yeah, all new for 2019. Uh, and we had the opportunity to actually see this as a sneak peek in Texas. And uh, get this, they brought it in via helicopter. Wow, well, no helicopters for the launch here in Detroit, but it was a grand affair held at the historic Eastern Market on the Saturday before the show opened. Our Joel Fike was there. Introducing the all-new 2019 Chevy Silverado. It's the biggest selling vehicle for GM and the most profitable. So there's a lot riding on the success of this launch. GM Executive Vice President Mark Royce says it's 450 pounds lighter than the previous version. And the truck bed is bigger by seven inches. We, we put uh, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars into the paint shop up there for the long-term um, viability of this truck. Royce says GM will still use steel unlike its competitor, the Ford F-150, which uses aluminum. We talked to a Ford truck owner who's impressed with this new Chevy. You're gonna trade in your Ford for a Chevy? Yeah, yeah. and she's gonna take it from yeah, me. Yeah, she's, she's gonna trade take it. it from me. That's, that's how she is. All right, right. So I'll trade it in and she'll drive it, and I'll say it's my truck, but she'll drive it. While Chevy has produced 85 million trucks, 
it knows it has to hit a home run with this one. And I don't know if you were listening to any of the truck guys who are standing around, yeah. and they were like, "This is it. This is it. They got it. They did it. This is. They nailed it." And and I like I heard the murmurs all around me that yeah. the guys who are the Chevy truck guys love it. Some of these trucks are made in Mexico and Fort Wayne, Indiana, but all of the HD versions are made in Flint, along with the GMC Sierra, which should launch in just a few weeks. All right, thanks, Joel. I'm real curious to know, what was it like to see this thing at the preview flying on a helicopter? You know, it was pretty awesome because you heard the thump, thump, thump of the rotors of the helicopter before you saw anything. So you're looking around trying to see where it is and bam, there it was. By chance, did they let you drive it? No, they didn't even let us get close to it. Wow. Well, you can get close to it here at the North American International Auto Show, so be sure to come check it out at the Chevy display. Meanwhile, a lot happening with the other uh, two domestic automakers. We'll start at Ford. Ford has America buzzing now that it will re-enter the mid-sized truck market with the all-new Ranger. It blends comfort and functionality with room for up to five people and their gear. Powered by a 2.3-liter turbocharged four-cylinder EcoBoost engine, this beauty hits the showrooms this fall. Ford also introducing an all-new Edge crossover. It has eight available trims. We're looking for Edge to continue as a hot seller. But the hottest new offering from the Blue Oval is this limited edition Mustang Bullet. It salutes the 1968 movie car that Steve McQueen drove. 475 horsepower, a throaty growl, and that special green paint. Now, having seen all of that, we are here on the platform at the Ford stand with the original Mustang Bullet and the new Mustang Bullet. And this guy right here, Mark Schaller, you're the brand manager for Mustang. Tell us how all of this came together. And I guess we should start with the big surprise you had for Molly McQueen uh, at the introduction. Sure, so um, this car, the original Bullet that was used in the movie, um, has actually been lost to history for you know over 30 years. Um, it's in a, a private individual's uh, hands. Uh, it was a family car. In fact, um, Sean Kiernan, who's the owner, his mother used to dri daily drive it. Uh, she was a third grade Catholic school teacher in New Jersey and would drive it to work uh, back and forth and the nuns would say they could hear her coming. Um, so, you know, as, as their family kind of progressed and, and things happened, the car um, had a few problems and, and ended up being in the garage and like everybody's project cars, it, it sort of got put on the back burner, right? So lost to history for about 30 years and then and um, uh, Sean and his father had always wanted to reveal it back to the world, and they wanted to do so with Ford Motor Company. So they actually approached us. Um, we had a small meeting in our, in our product development center, and Sean and his team came in, and, and we all sat around the table wide-eyed and, and listened to his story, and we're really touched by it. So um, we decided that, that we wanted to, to put it on stage here at the North American International Auto Show. Um, and at the same time, since we're developing the third generation Mustang Bullet from Ford Motor Company, we wanted to have a tie-in with the McQueen family as well. So um, we asked Molly McQueen, Steve's granddaughter, if she wanted to be a part of it. Um, and so we got a chance to, uh, to introduce her back to the car her grandfather drove over about 50 years ago in that movie. She told a great story uh, at the event coming up. And then of course, the Mustang has such great history with, with Ford Motor Company. Talk a little bit about this new iteration of the Bullet, if you will. The, the, Things that you said about this car on Sunday would just make the person who loves muscle cars drool. Yeah, so um, this is a really special car. Um, it's one of those that, that uses the original as inspiration, and the original is really um, more of a stripped down version. You'll notice on the side there's no five liter badge, there's no badge in the grill of the car. It's more of a minimalist design, and as designers, go through their, their checks and balances and, and try to, to make cars, actually showing restraint ends up being one of the harder things to do when you're designing a vehicle. So um, you'll notice not a lot of badging on the outside. You'll, there's some, some subtle cues to the original. Uh, the chrome opening around, around the window, the chrome around the front grille, um, the torque thrust style wheels. Um, so it all harkens back to the design of the original car that Steve used in the movie. And of course, the dark Highland green paint on the exterior. Gorgeous color, gorgeous color indeed. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what all of what's happening with Ford right now? I mean, the, not only the introduction of, these, of this Mustang, but also the, the Ranger coming back to the midsize truck uh, arena, the new Edge that you guys have, plus everything else you're maintaining. Uh, Ford continues to, to push strong in terms of products. Um, we're really proud of what we're doing. The team works really hard to bring those products to market that customers have been asking for and, and looking for. Um, the, the new Ranger is incredible. Um, it's a, an absolute killer in the global sales. Um, and then Edge has been a great 
great vehicle for us and including the ST which is the new introduction um, so somebody that wants a, a sporty performance SUV uh, Ford Motor Company has that one as well. Mark thank you so much for sharing some time with us we do appreciate it. Thank you for your time enjoy the show. All right great all right folks uh, Jill has made her way down to Ram where they have introduced a brand new truck as well so let's check in with her right now. We are now here in the Ram display and we are going to be checking out the all new 2019 Ram 1500 pickup truck and it has a lot of new nifty features like this stuff right here that you can easily climb into the bed. So we're here with Jim Morrison who is the vice president for Ram North America and he's going to tell us about these cool features. Like I'm really excited about this truck. I, I mean it's a truck but I'm excited. Tell me about some of the cool things. Well there's a lot of really new uh, cool features in the all new 2019. Uh, Ram 1500. It's a no compromise truck. Right. It's a truck first, so it's got to have a, a very um, capable bed. It can put 2300 Jills in the back <laughs> of this uh, bed. Because a Simonello is a unit of measure, so we can fit uh, a lot of Simonellos back here. You can, and you can actually uh, tow 12,750,000 pounds with this new Ram, so it's incredible. So, in terms of luxury, tell me about that awesome 12 inch screen. Oh, it's fantastic. Right. For the first truck manufacturer to put a 12 inch screen uh, in their uh, in their trucks it's amazing it's it's called Uconnect uh, with our next generation um, it's got a 360 L uh, Sirius platform as well so it's Sirius on demand it actually learns your your uh, uh, taste for music and, and adapts uh, what you can get you can actually pick this uh, what you want to listen on the radio it's incredible you can split the screen you can put apple carplay in the bottom you can put your nav screen on the top or your weather map if you're a, a farmer trying to figure out you know where uh, which fields to uh, harvest next it's incredible technology and it's not just about the front seat passengers in this vehicle uh, there's some interesting back seat features including um, a reclining seat Yes. Our customers said they wanted more space. Okay. So, you know, whether you're three big guys going to a job uh -huh. site or whether you want to put three kid seats across the back, right. the new Ram can pull it off. It's got um, a four inch bigger mm -hmm. uh, overall cab, uh, three inches more in the back seat. It's got 41 uh, inches of legroom, best in wow. class legroom, tons of space. Um, but it actually lets you recline as well. So uh, for those long trips, you can you can really relax in the back of your Ram. Nobody else uh, does that. And on the luxury side, we don't only put heated and cooled seats in the front, we put heated and cooled seats in the back of your Ram. So the last thing I want to ask you about uh, before we wrap it up is the new e-torque system, the mild hybrid system that you're putting in this. It's standard on the V6 engine. Yes. yes? Um, available on the V8 engine. Yes, you get and, the Hemis either way. And, and, and it's basically a mild hybrid for fuel savings. Yes, and performance. And performance. You know, that's why, um, you know, we talk to our truck customers and they always want more performance, mm -hmm. but they appreciate efficiency as well. So with the new uh, e-torque Hemi, you can have your cake and eat it too. So the regular Hemi has uh, 395 horsepower, 410 torque. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we supplement that with another 130 pound-feet of torque wow. with the battery power that's instant. So when you step on the gas in yeah. this new Ram, it, it hauls. It's really fun and it's got lots of power. And th that's the powertrain that gets us you know, 12,750 pounds of towing. So it's awesome. all work. So fun, practical, comfortable, no compromises. No compromise in the new Ram. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Jim, for uh, talking with us today about this new 2019 Ram 1500. I believe that our friend Mike has wended his way over to the Jeep display, and uh, we have some more news from the FCA brand to talk about with you today. All right. Thanks, Jill. Great truck over there. And there's a great Jeep Cherokee behind us right here. Scott Talon is the Jeep brand director, and you just launched this uh, new Cherokee. Can we call it all new, or is it just slightly new? No, I would tell you that it's been reimagined, re-engineered, and certainly redesigned for 2019 model year. Talk about what's different. Well, first of all, you'll notice that the appearance of the vehicle is different than the prior generation. So we've taken this opportunity to, um, you know, restyle the front end entirely. So the hood, the fenders, the front face of the grill. Again, a modern interpretation of what a classic Jeep should look like with its iconic seven-slotted grill, but more, more in line with some of its uh, other Jeep counterparts like the Grand Cherokee. So we've made some enhancements there. We've redesigned the back of the vehicle, but we've really improved it inside and out. And Jill's managed to come over here from the truck. Uh, Jill, yeah. you got any impressions on this Jeep? You know, I think it looks really good. I, I, the first thing I noticed was the headlights. The headlights are different. 
Yeah, the headlights are different, and you know, before we it was a little bit, as, as we mentioned, a little bit polarizing. But right. in many cases, the, the our owners that have bought these over the last several years, they love that look. So yeah. we want to retain that and really evolve the styling and not change it overly dramatic, but at the same time, bring it up and modernize it as well. So a nice, I think, balance between both the old and somewhat those customers we're looking for. And very quickly, on sale now or to come? To come, very soon. So we'll be in showrooms in, uh, in a matter of weeks. All right, sounds good. Scott, thank awesome. you for taking time. Thank you. We appreciate it. It's a pleasure. All right. We're going to take a break here. We've got much more coming your way from the North American International Auto Show. Stay with us. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking. Now start screening. No matter how much you've smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. How to know if you should reach out to a friend? Your friend might be worried, sad, grumpy, angry, stressed, weird, rebellious, anxious, antisocial, lonely, sleeping less, sleeping more, eating less, eating more. Look, there are a lot of things to watch out for, but you know your friend best. So if they're not acting themselves, why not say something? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome back, everybody. We're now in the Chevy display right by the Bolt EV. Here's why. Some students and faculty members at Flint's Kettering University are involved in a research challenge right now that's tied to autonomous vehicles. They are on the cutting edge of our future. This is an extremely, extraordinarily exciting time in automotive. Kettering President Dr. Bob McMahon is pumped that his school is among eight across the country picked for an important challenge. Our students and faculty are working together over the next three years to design and develop a fully autonomous uh, version of this Bolt. He's talking this Chevy Bolt, which a team is working to modify. Freshman Eric Smith is on that team. He studies computer science. Specifically, I'm really interested in computer vision and machine learning. So I'm doing some work right now to learn how to detect stop signs or traffic signs and respond to them in the vehicle. The notion of driverless cars, exciting to some, very scary to others. Literally what we're witnessing is the transformation of the technologies and the structures and the vehicles that we use to move around. It's a big challenge to overcome, but in the end of the day, we trust computers an awful lot. They can make decisions way faster than we can. So as long as we're careful and we're designing these systems, I believe we can make them a lot safer than everyday drivers. Good to know some of that future is tied to mid-Michigan. All right, let's send it over to Jill. She is over at the Nissan display talking electric vehicles. All right, we are now here in the Nissan display and we are with Jonathan Ratliff, who is the senior manager for electric vehicle engineering. Um, and 
We're hearing a lot about electric cars uh, at, at the show and just in general lately. And case in point, here's the all new uh, 2018 Nissan Leaf, completely redesigned for this model year. Yep. And uh, it's a really slick vehicle, but it's all electric. Yes, it is. 150 miles on a single charge, which is up about 50 miles from the previous generation. Yes. Uh, and I hear a rumor that maybe there might be a 200 mile plus EV in the future for this. We do. We do have plans to offer a okay. larger battery option for people um, uh -huh. to kind of give some value to this vehicle that people want from our customers, right. as well as a longer range vehicle in the future for those that might need it. Right. And, and so this vehicle here, you know, we're moving towards the front and you can see that it, it has um, the charge in the front. So it's not in the side like you would have for uh, a gasoline. It's right here in the front. And we were talking a little bit off camera about the idea that, you know, you think about, oh, how am I going to fuel up this vehicle? And people think that the charging infrastructure isn't there, but that's not really how people are charging this vehicle. They're charging it at home, right? Right. If you think about the convenience, most people really don't love going to the gas station to begin right, with. Right. So when we think about how the car is used, most people on their typical commute will come home after work, they'll plug the car in, it's really, really convenient. They wake up in the morning, it's fully charged, they're ready to go, they never really have to go to a gas station. Really, when you think about it, the, the whole infrastructure idea, yeah, if you wanted to take a road trip, it would be nice to have infrastructure along the way, but uh, this is really practical, and I, I think you even said maybe it costs less than gasoline? It does. Um, so the overall cost of fueling up on in your home through electricity is about a third of the overall cost of gas. Okay. It's much, much cheaper. So they get a lot of value out of that. So what I'm hearing you say is that owning an EV is actually really cost efficient and a great idea for the environment and the world in general. It really is. It's really positive. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today, not only about the all new Nissan LEAF, but the um, EV charging and infrastructure in general. And uh, we're going back to, to Mike. All right, Jill, thank you. Now, when you think about the future at an auto show, you think hot concepts, like the one you see behind me here. That's the Infinity Q Inspiration. Our Drew Moore had a chance to check out some others. Drew? Yeah, that's right, Mike and Jill. A lot of really cool cars down here at the Auto Show this year. But what's even more interesting are some of the cars that aren't on the road yet, the concept cars on what driving in the future might look like. Part of the draw to the North American International Auto Show is for people to get to see what may be coming next. They call them the concepts. Auto shows are about dreams and thinking about the auto industry. Infinity engineers dreaming up this Q Inspiration sedan with a big turbo engine and cameras for rear view mirrors. Many of the features not quite ready for production though. There's a dream car here, but there's also some reality that you can find in your showroom as well. We are just getting started. Nissan making a splash showing off their cross-motion concept SUV. The dashboard, as you can see here, turned into six LED screens, giving drivers active updates with what's happening all around the car, from everything from cars near you to the buildings you're driving by. Japanese DNA flavor to emphasizing our originality, design story, from the coming from Japan to, to showcasing in the U.S. Engineers say you will be the deciding factor on if or when any of these concepts hit the road. But your feedback and the customer feedback, media feedback, really important for making sure that what direction Nissan should go for the future. Lexus also introducing the limitless F1 and GAC showing off their Enverge electric crossover. But the EQ electric vehicle for Mercedes is almost ready to go from concept to real life and will be their flagship for the Mercedes electric vehicle line. When you look on the shape and on design elements of the car, this is really the idea where we think electric mobility and especially our new brand EQ, which stands for electric uh, intelligence, will go within the next years. So they're certainly cool to look at right now. What could be the future of driving cars and technology and interior on the road? It's not here yet, but as you heard some of those designers say, it could be a few years down the road. And if that's the case, the future looks pretty cool to be behind a wheel. Reporting from Detroit, Drew Moore. All right, Drew, thank you. And everybody, we still got just a little bit more for you coming from the North American International Auto Show here in Detroit. So stay with us and we'll be right back after the break. Planning the right amount of food is hard. The guesstimator makes it easy. Just tell it who's coming and what's for dinner. 
Then it tells you how much to make. And yes, it even plans for leftovers. Try it at savethefood.com. Did you hear about the pony with a sore throat? He was a little horse. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why couldn't the pelican? Wait. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. Where the cats go on vacation? New York. <laughs> Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. They'll test you, try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm, just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Start a story. Adopt at theshelterpetproject.org. Welcome back, everybody. We're wrapping up our coverage here from the North American International Auto Show, and it's really been a great couple of days for us. You know, it has. I feel like a little bit of a kid at Christmas when auto show season comes because you get to see so many cool things all in one place. Yeah. And we've seen some really cool things today. We saw the Mustang Bullet. You know, we saw the all-new Jeep Cherokee, and we've seen some really cool concepts. Absolutely. And now it is your turn to come down and check it out. So if you're making the trip to Kobo, here's what you need to know. The North American International Auto Show is at Detroit's Kobo Center. It runs through Sunday, January 28th. The show is open 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. each day, except for the final day when the hours are 9 to 7. Tickets are $14 for adults, 7 for seniors 65 and older, and children 7 to 12. Those 6 and younger get in free with a parent or guardian. Get your tickets online or get more information at NAIAS.com. So have fun, everybody, and until we see you again from the 2019 North American International Auto Show, I'm Mike Wolfolk. And I'm Jill Simonello. Have a great year, everybody. We'll see you next time.